So, early one morning, we all woke up at 4.30, which was a pretty amazing feat for some of us. I'm not going to mention names. Brian! Still really early. And got on the first train and made our way all the way across the city to Skiji Fish Market. ships come in with the huge loads of fish and it gets divvied out into all these market stalls. This is unbelievably fresh. This is so ridiculous. Such an intense experience. You're always being jostled by somebody trying to get through. Always in the way. Always about to get run over. But that's still so fucking cool. I guess that's what makes it awesome, but it's really a market. And we really shouldn't be here. Not at all. The interesting thing about us going that day is that it was the first day Skiji was reopened to tourists. It was filled with camera crews. Also, all these Japanese TV stations we recognized were there following us and filming us film the market, just hoping that we would fuck something up so they could put it on the news. Maybe sometimes tourists aren't always the most culturally respectable of classes, but just coming up and touching all the fish. I and mean, this is fish that you know, is fresh enough and needs to be high quality enough that it can be used in sushi and eaten raw that day. People are coming up and poking it. How can you tell it's fresh? Hmm? How can you tell how fresh? Uh, the uh, color. The color? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if it's a nice red color? Yes, nice. And the uh, light? Life is beautiful. Ah, yeah, life is beautiful. So this is the point of the market, is the, uh, the, the tuna, really. The, so very, very early in the morning when all the ships come in, all the restaurants from all over come in and mass buy all of the best tuna every day. So you're totally banned from the auction. They're already open at this point. But they're already, what ski is famous for? I've never wanted fresh fish more before I wanted to get up. Hiro is one of our best Japanese friends. We uh, live with him. He actually lives just two doors down. And he's kind of become a companion uh, that goes out with us on some of these adventures. And uh, I think oftentimes it must be just incredibly amusing to watch us try and understand Japanese culture. Okay. Let's go looking for a sushi place that has enough seats for six, well, five hungry Americans and one very kind Japanese man. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, so show us the... And the... Uh, gun? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um... Ah! Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Actually, I'm yes. sauce. <laughs> oh. Oh, sorry. I put it there, but I didn't think. That's too small. <laughs> We're good. Oh, man. Form. Right. I think that this might be the best breakfast I've ever had. I love the pan. 
wish I could fit all the crazy things that we saw in Ski Jean into a single episode, but it's like 10 square miles of fish. The place just goes on forever. And that's the whole district. It's all fish. Tokyo seems to do that. It takes ideas, like single concepts, and just compresses them down into like a regional space and then gives it a name. And that's a district. Like, I mean, you want a prostitute? Go to Shibuya. It's after midnight. You want fish? You go to Skiji. You want to wander around the temples? You go to Asakusa. You want to see a living, breathing self parody of Japanese culture? You go to Akihabara. Basically, if you imagine every stereotype you have about Japan, where it's just J-pop blaring and people playing DDR and buying anime and all that shit, it's all here. This is built entirely out of those ruins. Just crazy, wacky Japanese stuff. Our trip to Akihabara is actually also my last night in Japan before I had to get on a plane and get out of there. Um, I don't actually remember all the details uh, of the night, um, but I'm almost positive that after the arcades it went straight downhill. So sure enough, after that, uh, we finish up in Akihabara and we head back to Shibuya. We're trying to figure out what do we do for the rest of the night. And then it strikes us that there's really only one answer. It's karaoke. This is over. This is the end. This is the start and the end. Let's just get, okay. if we can just get the end right so, here. So, I need to be on a plane to America at 3.30 in the afternoon tomorrow. It is now 8 p.m. the day before. And you're gonna make it. Well, I'm living in Japan forever, apparently. You know what? No. Well, let's just skip ahead to the morning. So, over my last day in Tokyo, we drank for 12 consecutive hours. Um, and now we have like three hours to get me to Narita Airport, and we have no money and no idea how to get there. So, uh, let's, let's hit the road. <laughs> in the end, it all worked out. We did actually make it to the airport, um, got on the last bus on time. He got me to my plane, and after that, things went pretty smoothly. I'm back in Massachusetts, and I'm editing from home again. But, you know, a big part of me probably wouldn't have minded if things had been totally screwed up and I had just been stranded permanently on the road, Jet Set Zero. Jet's always kind of nice. We talk to him every day, he's such an involved part of our lives. It's like he's always kind of there, just missed him. He just left, or he's working at the cafe. Um, so it felt really, I don't know, really normal to have him along with us. It's just been fun to have him around. It's cool to have like this, this other team member who's always there and been with us from day one with this project to actually be out in the field with us. 